What up, y'all? This is your Mr. Downtown Ray Mel. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Orlando for Thursday, December 15th, 2022. Delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mel. That's R A Y. M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Andrew Cowell says he won't return as Superman after all. The 39-year-old actor said in the post Wednesday that He's been dropped as Superman in the DC Extended Universe following a meeting with filmmaker James Gunn and producer Peter Safran, who were named co-chairman and CEO of DC Studios in October. Cavill wrote, I just had a meeting with James Gunn and Peter Safran, and it's sad news, everyone. I will, after all, not be returning as Superman. After being told by the studio to announce my return back in October prior to their hire, this news isn't the easiest, but that's life. He said the changing of the guard is something that happens. I respect that. James and Peter have a universe to build. I wish them and all involved with the new universe the best of luck and the happiest of fortunes. Cavill told friends that Superman and his and his message will live on. He says, for those who have been by my side through the years, we can mourn for a bit, but then we must remember, Superman is still around. Everything he stands for ex- still exists, and the examples he sets for us are still there. My turn to wear the cape has passed, but what Superman stands uh, will for never will. It's been a fun ride with you all, onward and upwards. Jason Momoa, who plays Aquaman in the uh, DC Extended Universe, and Zachary Levy, who portrayed Shazam, showed their support for Cavill in the comments. Momoa wrote, Love you, brother. Levi says, Hope to catch you in another universe, sir. Cavill had confirmed his return as Superman in October following a cameo in the film Black Adam. News later broke that Liam Hemsworth would replace Cavill as Giro the Rivia in the Netflix series The Witcher. Gunn said Wednesday that he and Saffron have a DC slate ready to go, including a new Superman film without Cavill. The director tweeted, Among those on the slate is Superman. In an initial stage, our story will be focusing on an earlier part of Superman's life, so the character will not be played by Henry Cavill. He says, but we just had a great meeting with Henry, and we're big fans, and we talked about a number of exciting possibilities to work together in the future. HBO Max released a trailer for The Climb on Thursday. Jason Momoa and rock climbers Craig Sharma and Megan Martin host the rock climbing competition show. Uh, Sharma says that he met Momoa when they were both Nelvi's Climbers, Momoa compared Sharma and Martin to Superman and Wonder Woman. The trail challenged 10 new climbers to scale rocks around the world. Locations include Majorca, Spain, and Wadi Rum, Jordan. The winner receives a $100,000 prize and a Perna scholarship. Contestants include men and women of all ages, from their 20s and 30s to a 53-year-old woman. Momoa waxed philosophical about his love for climbing. Momoa said, climbing, it's so rooted in my soul, it just opens your mind. The climb, open, uh, the climb, per, uh, the climb premieres January 12th on HBO Max. Writer, director, and producer Ryan Murphy will be honored at the 2023 Golden Globe Awards. The Iowa Foreign Press Association said in a press release Thursday that Murphy, who's 57, will receive the fourth Carol Burnett Award at the awards show in January. The Golden Globes will be taking place January 10th, 2023 at the Beverly Hilton Hotel in Beverly Hills, California and air 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on NBC. The ceremony will also be available to stream on Peacock. In a related story, comedy legend Eddie Murphy is to be honored with the Cecil B. DeMille Award at the 80th Annual Golden Globe Ceremony next month. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association made the announcement Wednesday. Murphy's credits include Saturday Night Live, 48 Hours, Trading Places, 
Beverly Hills Cop, Coming to America, The Nighty Professor, Dream Girls, Dolmite is My Name in the Shrek franchise. It'll be honored January 10th at the gala set to air live on NBC and Peacock. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association president, uh, Helen Hockney, said in a statement, We're honored to present this year's Cecil B. The Mill Award to the iconic and highly esteemed Mr. Eddie Murphy. Uh, we're thrilled to be celebrating the lasting impact on film and television that his career in front of and behind his camera has had through the decades. Previous recipients of the Cecil B. The Mill Award include Jane Fonda, George Clooney, Morgan Freeman, Oprah Winfrey, Robert De Niro, Audrey Hepburn, Harrison Ford, Jodie Foster, Sophia Loren, Steven Spielberg, Denzel Washington, Robin Williams, and Tom Hanks. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film, Your Place or Mine. The streaming service shared a first-look photos uh, for the romantic comedy Thursday featuring Reese Witherspoon and Anston Kutcher. Your Place or Mine is based on an original script by Aileen Brosh McKenna, who will make her featured directorial debut with the film. The new movie follows two best friends, Witherspoon and Kutcher, who swap homes for a week and see their whole lives change. Jesse Williams, Zoe Chow, Wesley Kimmel, Griffin Matthews, Rachel Bloom, Sherry Appleby, Vela Lovely, Tig Notaro, and Steve Zahn also star. Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine will co-produce the film with Jason Bateman and Michael Costigan's um, Aggregate Films. Laura Neustadter will also produce for Hello Sunshine along McKenna for Lean Machine. Kutcher joined the project in August 2021. Your Place or Mine, premieres February 10, 2023, on Netflix. Where Spoon also stars on the Apple TV Plus series, The Morning Show, while Kutcher was last seen in the film, Vengeance. Daisy Edgar-Jones will play famed singer-songwriter Carol King in a new film. The uh, deadline reported Thursday that Jones will portray King in the upcoming biopic Beautiful for Sony Pictures. Beautiful is a film adaptation of the Broadway musical Beautiful, the Carol King musical, which follows King's rise to fame and the ups and downs of the singer's life and career. The Beautiful musical had a five-year run on Broadway from 2014 to 2019. The show featured several of King's hit songs, including One Fine Day, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, and I Feel the Earth Move. Lisa uh, Chorlodenko directed the film and produced with Tom Hanks, Gary Goldsman, and Paul Blake, who produced the stage show. Uh, Chorlodenko and Stuart Bloomberg will also write the script based on Douglas McGrath's book of the musical. Sherry Kondar, uh, Christine Russell, Stephen Shasharian, and Mike Bosner will serve as executive producers. Variety confirmed Jones' casting. Uh, King said in a statement, uh, Daisy has a spirit and energy that I recognize in myself when I was uh, younger. She's a tremendous talent, and I know she's going to give a great performance. Jones recently starred in the film adaptation of the Della Owens novel Where the Craw Dads Sing and the Hulu series Normal People and Under the Banner of Heaven. Michael Keaton will be making his directorial debut in Knox Goes Away, an indie noir thriller starring Al Pacino, Marsha Gay Harden, Susie Nakamura, and James Marsden. Leah Loren, Ray McKinnon, John Hugenacker, and Julia Kulig are also in the cast. Per the synopsis, Keaton plays contract killer John Knox, who is diagnosed with a fast-moving form of dementia. He vows to spend his final days attempting to redeem himself by saving the life of his estranged adult son played by Marsden. He finds himself in a race against the authorities as well as the ticking clock of his own rapid deteriorating mind. Brook Street and uh, Sugar 23 are producing the film. Greg Portier will, uh, wrote the original screenplay. Brook Street says original noir thrillers like these are a rarity nowadays so as producers and movie lovers, we couldn't be more excited to be part of this project. With Michael Keaton be both behind and in front of the camera, combined with the rest of our gifted cast and crew, the audience is in for a real treat. Uh, the Oscar and Emmy winning uh, Keaton is coming off his win for Dope Sick, 
the 2021 Hulu series that dealt with the impact of the opiate addiction. Knox Goes Away has complete principal photography and is currently in post-production. Chris, 50 Cent's Jackson is partnering with stars to develop a scripted boxing series. Co-writers Daniel Fajizmian Duncan and Marlon Smith brought the show to Jackson and stars. Childhood friends who hail from South London have a successful debut series in Channel 4's run with Olivia Coleman and Lenny, and Lenny James. Fight Land is the fourth project they're working on concurrently, including a remake of a gangster movie for a working title, a true crime series for Channel 4, and an adaptation of the science fiction book The Upper World for Netflix with Daniel Kuyua attached. Um, Catherine Busby, the president of original programming at Star, says Fight Land embodies the stakes, swagger, and ambition that collaborations between Stars and 50 Cents have come to represent. We're so excited to be working with Daniel and Marlon, who are brilliant writers and whose authentic take will bring this global story to life. Per the synopsis released by Stars, the project follows a retired disgraced world champion fighter drawn into the corrupt underbelly of the sport after the disappearance of his childhood best friend and training partner. To save his friend, the troubled fighter will have to return to a way of life that nearly destroyed him, one that cost him everything to leave behind. This marks the first deal since Jackson and Stars ended their fruitful exclusive production deal anchored by the Power spin-offs. The initial show ran for six seasons. The franchise now includes Power Book 2, Ghost, Power Book 3, Raising Can, and Power Book 4, Force. Jackson also developed the show BMF about Detroit's infamous drug-dealing brothers Demetrius and Terry Flannery. Kevin Hart and Kenan Thompson are combining their creative talents for a televised year-end review show heading to Peacock. They released a trailer for that Back That Year Up on Thursday. Hart, uh, the actor, comedian, producer, and Saturday Night Live's longest tenure cast member in the show's history, Kenan Thompson will deliver laughs as they go through the year that was. That was. Guest stars on the hour-long broadcast include Quinta Brunson, Nick Cannon, Rob Gergrowski, Amber Ruffin, Roy Wood Jr., and Terry Crews. Kevin Hart will produce through his Heartbeat Productions. Um, Hart said in a press release, I couldn't let the holidays pass without giving my fans one more gift, so here it is. 2022, back that year up, my Heartbeat team and I uh, scoured uh, the internet for the best clips, hysterical moments, and embarrassing bloopers that encapsulated the firestorm that was 2022. Kenan and I are going to make you laugh, cry, and most importantly, ready to ring in the new year and start this all over for 2023. Thompson, who just teamed with actress Kiki Palmer for an SNL skid that paid tribute to his time on the popular Nickelodeon show Kenan and Kel, said he's happy to be working with Hart. Um, he said, anytime my bros uh, come calling, I'm here. I always have a mountain of laughs with that guy, and shout out to the entire team that has helped us put this recap together. I think you're going to love it. Happy New Year. Uh, Back That Year Up airs on December 23rd on Peacock. Apple TV Plus is giving a glimpse of Mythic Quest, the companion series. The streaming service announced a new comedy, Mere Morals, in the press release Thursday. Mere Morals takes place in the same universe as Mythic Quest, which will return for a third season on Apple TV Plus in November. Mythic Quest follows the staff of the fictional studio behind the MMORPG video game Mythic Quest. Mere Mortals will explore the lives of employees, players, and fans who are impacted by the game. Show hails from Ashley Birch, John Howe, um, Harris and Katie McKenney, and Megan Gantz. Rock McKenney, David Hormsby, and Charlie Day are executive producers. The new episodes follows the models of the Mythic Quest episodes, Ever Light, A Dark Quiet Death, Backstory, Mythic Quest, Quen uh, Quarantine, and the upcoming uh, episode, Sarian, set for release Friday. 
Mythic Quest is created by Rog McKenney, Day, and Gantz. The series stars Birch, Rog McKenney, uh, Jesse Ennis, Imani Hakim, David Hormsby, Charlotte Nicodeo, Danny Pudi, and Naomi S. Pergren. Uh, Mythic Quest was renewed for through Season 4 in October 2021. Latest winner of the reality competition series of ever has been announced. Mike Gabler, a horror valve specialist from Houston, was named the sole survivor of season 43, taking home a million dollar prize. Gabler uh, donated the money to the charity Veterans in Need in the name of his father, Robert Gabler, uh, CVS announced on Thursday. The 52 year old horror valve specialist, the second oldest winner in the history of the show, was a surprise winner. At one point, he asked his team to vote him out, but in the end, the jury voted uh, for him seven wins, one loss, no draws over fellow contestants Cassidy Clark and Owen Knight. Uh, no one knew before that he would donate the prize. Galater E.W., I was talking with a buddy of, of, of mine who is a veteran and my wife. And we were talking about what if we win this? You know, I've worked really hard all my life. I've been I've built a good financial setup all around me. Um, you know, so I've got another eight years before I can retire. I've still got a kid in college, one more to go. I've got a house payment, all that stuff. The money would have helped, sure, but my father's a veteran. My uncles are veterans. A lot of guys. I went to high school and college with our, 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 vet, our veterans, and they need some help. Hosted by Jeff Prost, Survivor has been airing for 22 seasons. It was adapted from the Swedish show Expedition Robinson and has become a reality TV juggernaut with dozens of Emmy Award nominations. The 44 season is scheduled to premiere uh, March 1st. Prince Harry says his brother, Prince William, screamed and shouted at him over his exit from the royal family. In the new episodes of the Netflix docuseries Harry and Meghan, released Thursday, Harry recalled his tense meeting with his late grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II, father of Prince Charles, now King Charles III, and Harry in 2020. Harry and his wife, May Markle, announced in early January 2020 that they would step back from their roles as senior members of the British royal family. Queen Elizabeth held a family summit at her home in Sandraham, Norfolk in mid-January 2020 to discuss the couple's decision. And Harry and Meghan, Harry and Markle uh, uh, said Markle was not uh, invited to the gathering, leaving Harry to meet with his family alone. Harry says, I went in with the same proposal that we'd already made publicly. Once I got there, I was given five options, one being all in, no charge, uh, five being all out. He shared, I chose option three in the meeting, half in, half out, have our own jobs, but also work in support of the Queen. Harry says his decision was met with resistance from his family. He says it became very clear very quickly that the goal was not up for discussion or debate. I was terrified to have my brothers scream and shout at me and my father say things that simply weren't true and my grandmother quietly sit there and sort of take it all in. According to Harry, the meeting ended without any solidified action plan. Uh, he says the saddest part of it was this wedge created between myself and my brother so that he's now on the institution's aid. Part of, of, um, part of that I get, I understand, right? That's his inheritance. So to some extent, I, it's already ingrained in him that part of his responsibility, the survivability and continuation of his institution. Harry and, and Megan, it's directed by Liggs Garbus. The series follows Harry and Markle early courtship and the challenges that led them to feeling forced to step back from the royal family, including the negative experiences from the press. Billy Lord is now a mom of two. The third year old actress confirmed Thursday that she welcomed her second child, daughter Jackson Joanne, with her husband Austin Rydell on December 12th. 
Lord shared the news on Instagram alongside a photo of her baby girl's hands. She captioned the post, December 12, 2022, introducing Kingston's sister Jackson Joanne Lord Rydell. Actor Cheyenne Jackson and actresses Leslie Grossman and Lily Collins were among those to congratulate Lord in the comments. Uh, Lord's father, talent agent Brian Lord, had announced the birth Tuesday at Variety's Dell Makers Breakfast in Beverly Hills, California. He said, at the event, my daughter had a baby last night. I left the hospital at 1.30 and got there this morning at 6. I'm a little tired, but happy. Lord and Rydell welcomed their first child, Kingston Fisher, in 2020 and married in March of this year. Lord attended the Los Angeles premiere of Ticket to Paradise in October after announcing in September that she was expecting her second child with Lord. Lord, the daughter of late Star Wars actress Carrie Fisher, is known for playing Lieutenant Kydell Co. Connix in the Star Wars films. She has also appeared in multiple seasons of the FX series The American Horror Story. Celebrities responded to the shocking death of dancer DJ Steven Twitch Boss. The four-year-old was found dead in the Los Angeles hotel room on Wednesday. The cause of death was confirmed by authorities to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Celebrities are stunned by his passing as the affable TV personality was just celebrating his ninth wedding anniversary with his wife and fellow dancer Allison Holker. The couple each uh, posted joyous pictures on their social media accounts last week. They're regularly posting videos dancing together in various popular uh, songs. Boss worked with talk show host Ellen DeGeneres from 2014 to 2020. She says that she is heartbroken by his passing. In a video tribute to Twitch after the Ellen DeGeneres show ended in May, she remains how they first met. The act said it was like going on a crash course, getting to know each other, and he was so patient with, uh, with me, she said in the video. We just bonded over learning to dance together. In her Instagram post, Jarrah says, Twitch was pure love and light. He was my family, and I love him with all my heart. I will miss him. Please send your love and support to Allison and his beautiful children, Wesley, Maddox, and Zaya. His Magic Mike co-star Chang Tatum posted about the loss in his Instagram account. Uh, the two shared a pivotal dance scene in the film where they had to mirror each other's moves. Tatum said in his post, I have no words. There aren't any. My head or heart uh, cannot understand this. This is just so much. I don't know where to begin. I love you. I'll see you again, my friend. Until then. Michelle Obama posted a photo of Boss with his wife, Allison Hooker, and the couple's three children. She said she got to know him through her Let's Move initiative and for visits to the Ellen DeGeneres show. Obama posted, Stephen was an incredible force uh, for someone who, ra who radiated kindness and positivity and made sure that people all around him uh, could feel it too. We uh, felt his spirits in every dance, every DJ event, um, set, every piece of creativity that he bought to life. My heart goes out to his wife, Allison, and their three children, um, Wesley, Maddox, and Zai. And finally, Trevor Noah will host the Grammy Awards for his third consecutive year. The 30-year-old writer, comedian, and television personality confirmed Thursday that he will return to host the 2023 Grammys in February. Uh, Noah tweeted, I'm super excited to be hosting the Grammys once again. Noah is the second person to host the Grammys at least three consecutive years in the past 30 years following LL Cool J. The Grammy Awards are presented by the Recording Academy and are honored outstanding achievements in the music industry. The 2023 ceremony will take place February 5th at the CrippleCon Arena and it will be airing on CBS. In an interview with Billboard, Noah says it is thrilling to host the Grammys for a third time. He said, uh, I don't think uh, it's never it's normal to host it once, so I don't have a great frame of reference for this. It is a thrill, McCarson, uh, 
uh, thrilling. The star says, for me, it is a cheat code because I'm a fan of the almost all the people who were there. He added, I'm a thousand uh, percent a fan, and what I love about Grammys is that I become a fan of a new artist or And for me, it's a cheat code because I'm a fan of almost all of the people who are there. He also added, uh, I'm a thousand percent fan, and what I love about the Grammys is that I become a fan of a new artist every single time. I come in, then I meet this new artist, and all of a sudden, here I am going, where are the black pumas? It introduces you to the music that you may wouldn't have been imposed to. And that was the entertainment report for Thursday, December 15th, 2022. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Answer Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You listen to this episode or any previous episode of the Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just find uh, the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio or 